There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a review of Bernadine Evaristo's Booker Prize winning novel from last year, 2019, Girl, Woman, Other. I have read it in June and July of 2020 as part of my job as one of the many, many judges for the semi-finals round of the Booktube Prize. I'm filming this video on maybe July 11th and you'll see it in early August. I'd heard a lot of buzz about this book. It got a lot of attention of the double winner, Booker, and all that stuff. And I really didn't have high expectations. It, it didn't really sound to me like it would be a Sean book. So I'm happy to report that it very much was. This was not a five-star read for me, but this was a very enthusiastic four-star read. There were things that I absolutely loved about it. I'm dying to tell you what those were. And a couple things that detracted enough that it wasn't a five-star read. So, as everybody knows, I don't. this is going to be a short review because you've, you've all seen a thousand reviews. Let me just add a, a few thoughts here. You all know what it's about. It's about, I think, a dozen black British women and how their lives intersect. Evaristo does quite a marvelous job for much of the novel with that. And she has an odd writing style that I didn't love but didn't care that I didn't love it. Like, it was not annoying to me, but she she's kind of writing in verse, but it's not poetry. And there's no periods, but there are question marks. There's no capital letters unless it's a proper noun. Yeah, I, I could have done without it, but it didn't bother me. I got used to it very quickly and just carried on. What I loved about this book was that Everest, uh, for most of the novel, did an absolutely incredible job of showing human connection between these people. And sometimes it was in the form of a romantic relationship, but I didn't think that that predominated over friendship and other kinds of relationships. And some of the relationships were mutually nourishing, and some were very abusive, and it was all kinds of connections. I am a very relationship-oriented person in my life, and I am a very character-centered reader, so I loved most of it. What I also thought worked extremely well for most of the novel was that there were a whole bunch of hot-button issues to do with race, sexuality, and gender. And I think it's a challenge to write about hot-button social political issues and craft shapely fiction with well-developed characters. And I think for the most part, Everest succeeds marvelously. In fact, Probably what endeared me to most of these characters more than anything else was the way that Evaristo showed them grappling with, dispensing with, exploring social politics in their relationships. And much is made of, for example, transgender pronouns. And one of my favorite scenes in the book <laughs> is there's a grandmother who has a transgendered... Actually, it's a great-grandmother, I think, who has a great transgendered great-grand person. <laughs> um, and she can't get the pronouns right. And her great-grand person, I'm sorry, I don't know what to say because of pronouns. Great-granny can't deal with the pronouns. And there's a very generous invitation that great-granny extends to this younger character. She massacres the term non-binary, which is what her great-grandchild is. There, great-grandchild, that's what I was looking for. And she writes a letter and says, I want you to invite all of your non-binding friends. <laughs> Just like, you know, that's... I have stories like that in my family, not about social political issues, but <laughs> I'm not going to take the time to tell you. So uh, delightful things like that and different issues of how characters deal with, cast aside embrace political correctness that made this a very rich read indeed. I loved so many of the characters. I think the great granny was my favorite, but I had many others that I loved. I loved, there was a young woman named Yaz, I think her name was Yaz, who is the daughter of the playwright at the center of the story. I, I loved her and her group of friends, and there was humor, there was pathos, there was heartbreak. 
and a web of connections that Eberisto leads us through, and you eventually realize that everything is going to connect in that E.M. Forrester way, and it's all brought full circle. That's what I loved. What I didn't really care for was that there was maybe too many characters. I think if it had been 10 characters instead of 12, it would have been a stronger novel. I think a few of the characters got short shrift and did because they weren't given enough space to grow and for me to get to know them on the page, they seemed like stereotypes. Just a couple. I think a couple of them, I don't, I don't know how I could choose which ones, but near the end there was just a couple too many characters. The other thing, and this didn't really kick in for me until about, it's been about two weeks since I read it, and a few days ago I started to think, you know, there was a lot of trauma in the lives of these characters, and we didn't ever really see the characters struggling to overcome it. They just seemed to overcome it by the next page, the next two pages. We didn't ever see them deep in their journeys. Oh, I hate that word, but, you know, we didn't see them really struggling. And I think that if it had been a little bit fewer characters and a little bit more of how they overcame, it would have been all the richer. That's why it's a four-star read for me, not a five. But there was much to love here, and a lot of readers had no problems at all. They loved everything about it, and that's fantastic. I think this is but one novel on Bernardino Ivaristo's literary journey. There's that word again. And she is going to write masterpieces. This isn't a masterpiece, but this was a lovely, lovely, important novel that I recommend very highly to you all. Thanks for watching. <laughs>